Hello everyone, I am Tacit and welcome to my first episode of my Gems of War Let's Play. In this episode, I will be showing you how to defeat Shegra from the Broken Spire Kingdom and some other helpful hints for first starting off in this game. First off, one thing that you'll want to do as soon as you get into this game is go over to this cog all the way to the right, click it, this is the options menu. And you'll want to make sure that show spell and mana details is checked. This will show all of the troops' mana costs within the game, and it will make it really a, a lot easier to determine um, how full your troops' mana are, as well as what troops to put in your into your team. One other thing that you'll want to do uh, fairly early into the game is to go to the guilds. You'll want to try finding a guild to go into. It is a great way to get free uh, souls, gems, and... Um, Glory Keys, which will help you progress your account. Uh, ways that you can do this is go to community.gemsofwar.com. There's always a bunch of people advertising there. Um, if you just click here and you're not in a guild, if you just click on the guild right here, it'll show a couple options and you can just uh, click into one of those. One other option that you have is to go all the way over here to these two uh, bubbles in the top right. Click on that. Click on channel and then type in 001. Then click go. This will take you to the main channel used for the global chat. And if you just advertise that you need a guild, someone will uh, likely be able to pick you up in a few minutes. So that those are guilds. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is this little blinking thing. You get tributes every single hour. Uh, this is your, all the gold that you accumulate from all your kingdoms. And every single kingdom has a uh, tribute of its own. Like here's Broken Spires when you first start off. It has... Um, this tribute 200 uh, gold and eight souls uh, leveling your kingdom up will increase this chance as well as other factors that I'll explain at a later time you use gold to upgrade these and uh, you'll essentially just want to start spreading getting kingdoms with your spare gold and start upgrading them all to about the same amount the reason I have Karakroth up a little bit more is because once Karakroth is at uh, level 10 it gives plus one magic, and it's one of the easiest uh, magic kingdoms to upgrade in the game. Magic is really important in this game because it's used on nearly every single troop. And uh, magic kingdoms is definitely the first thing to think about starting to level. But for the most part, you just want to spread out, make sure everything's at a fairly even level, and just go from there. And this is what a tribute is. Uh, it just gives you your hourly gold, and um, if you happen to uh, get a tribute to trigger, it'll give you some extra resources which each kingdom shows on this thing. Each kingdom shows it under their tribute. And if you happen to get it, uh, this is what you get. Uh, you may also notice uh, it has two times for all of these. When you set a home kingdom, it will give a two times uh, effectiveness of all of the tributes. So um, whatever kingdom you have the highest level in is likely the one you'll want to be setting as your home kingdom. So let's get into uh, defeating Shegra right now. Normal talking, talking, talking. Let's fight. And there's Shegra. It's funny that it says Devour, despite him not having Devour. Uh, one team that I've been using, I actually managed to get the legendary Karibos from... Or, what is that? Kerberos? I have no clue how he's actually pronounced that, but... Um, I, I managed to get him from uh, 12 Glory Keys I ended up opening. I will be showing most of my key openings on uh, video. Like, at the end of this video, I'll likely be uh, showing a bunch. I have 72 right now, that my, that, I, that I, all of which I got from the guild. So you definitely want to try getting yourself into a guild. Yeah, I've just been using this to get through all of the previous ones. I actually have all of my troops at level 1 still. So I'm going to be going through that. Um, the team that I will be using is the standard 4 that you get uh, at the beginning of the game to make sure anyone who's playing... You'll easily have these because you'll have to have them from the tutorial. These are the first four things you get in the game. You'll notice that uh, Hero does have the Crude Club. Uh, one reason why I don't didn't put the other weapon on is once you put on the manas to show the mana differences, you'll notice that uh, Warrior's Axe has a five higher mana cost for only one more damage. So you'll want to keep with the Crude Club. You don't want to do anything higher than that. You'll also notice I got the... Um, yellow red banner that i have set for this team which you unlock from um getting adana 
which is uh, the first kingdom that you unlock, so you'll definitely have it by the time you go to Shegra. So, um, when you have this team here, let's get by all this again. Hello, Shegra. Anyways. <laughs> uh, but once you've set this banner, banner um, your hero will be able to fill in a single match because uh, every single match is the standard three, one per gem. And then you get that extra one for the banner, which gives them full mana. And so that will be really useful defeat for defeating Shegra. Shegra also converts all reds to skulls. So you'll want to be taking as many reds as you can. And having this banner set will really help you to make sure you can uh, defeat uh, Shegra. I also have Goblin up front. Goblin won't be too useful in defeating a Shegra. The main thing you'll want to have is this Lance Knight. It does uh, a lot of armor gains. Every single green gem it destroys, it gets two armor for. So you'll want to be targeting all of the green gems uh, with your Lance Knight to make sure he gets into a really big tank. One other thing that I noticed, um, which is really nice that the devs did for newer players, um, there's two um, Swords Edge Kingdom troops when you first start off from the tutorial for. And it gives a bonus to armor. I know when I did um, the tutorial back like over <laughs> a year ago, uh, you didn't have like this kind of bonus. So this extra two armor to everything definitely helps. A uh, Warhound is definitely the weakest thing that you get at the beginning of the game. It becomes pretty obsolete uh, really quick. It does pick up some in the light game, but for the most part, you won't really be needing him. Uh, if you do happen to have other better troops, I would definitely suggest replacing Warhounds, such as one that can convert red gems into anything other than red gems. So Shugra can't... Um, wreck havoc on your team is definitely a good idea i'll just be sticking with these four because um just to make sure everyone who's watching this has them because everyone has these cards so i'm going to be leveling warhound up to level six uh you'll definitely want to get him to level six because he gets uh one more magic then and it makes it really easy to defeat shegra uh something that you can do with this if you decide to replace uh warhound with something else is just to give all your souls to uh, Goblin. So I'll be leveling this one at a time until it gets to level 6. And then I'll be putting the rest of my remaining souls into the other two characters. And as you'll see right there, he gets plus one magic. That is really important. And I'll just leave it at that because he doesn't get too much more from there. Uh, one thing that I'll link in the description is an updated troop list with all of the levels and everything. I looked at all these ahead of time just to make sure I know like what kind of levels I should be leveling it up to. It is a really good tool for when you're determining teams and just uh, how far you should level them. And I'll link that in the description because it is very useful. So now I'll get this up to level 5. And then I'll just dump the rest of the souls into the goblin. So that means your uh, team by the end of this will be uh, goblin at whatever the remaining souls is. Um, your knight at level 5. And your uh, warhound at level 6. The most important thing is to have warhound at level 6. And then you can just dump the rest on knight if you happen to have less souls than this. But there we go. I did this up to this because it gives that plus one magic. Uh, magic is really important in this game. So whenever you see it, you definitely want to try getting it. And now for the rest of these, I'm just going to dump it all into um, Goblin, which actually brings it up to level 7. But if you have uh, less souls, it doesn't really matter if Goblin is leveled up too much. But there we go. There's all of them leveled up now. And let's go into a match. Of course, we'll mainly be wanting to take reds and yellows. Lance Knight will be tanking, and Goblin will just be there, kind of to be there. He has a, a really good ability. He's actually one of the best cards in the game. Uh, deals damage to an enemy and then gains an extra turn. And it has a really low mana cost, which comes in handy, especially later in the game. And Crude Club is low-key one of the best weapons in the game. You should definitely keep it, and it becomes even stronger once you... Uh, be get the Warlord class at the end of this kingdom, which I'll be showing in a different video. Let's get into defeating Shugra, finally. <laughs> Been talking about it. And let me just scout it real quick to show you. Shugra, this battle is actually probably one of the hardest battles you'll have in this game. 
mostly because Shegra is so powerful relative to the kind of troops you'll have at this point. Because look at this, you have three really tanky ogres all up front, all level 11, 6 attack, 5 armor, and 12 HP. That is huge compared to these troops. Like 4 attack, 6 armor, 5 HP. And Shegra, he creates 6 red gems and then converts everything, all the reds to uh, skulls. Which can make it really difficult to try to kill this team. The one uh, be good benefit about this team, which does make it slightly easier, is all it is is skull damage. Which is why we got our Warhound up to level 6. This will make sure we can reduce their attack and make sure they're not as much as a threat. And with that yellow banner, it'll be even easier. So we can uh, just get them up with a yellow and a green match or two yellows or whatever we need to do. One of them has to be a yellow though, so we get that extra bonus. Let's see how we do on this. I have actually haven't tried doing this battle yet. So we'll see if I actually completely lose. But I believe this should be leveled enough that we can win. So let's go with the green first. Got the brown, but we don't use it, so it did nothing. Take these browns, already got it up. And we're basically just going to be uh, spamming Crude Club a lot this match. Unfortunately, we do not have anything that uses um, brown. So Shegra is going to be able to take those browns from us, but it shouldn't be too big a deal. Whenever you see skulls, you're going to want to take it to make sure uh, Shegra doesn't do anything. But you'll notice here we have a four, so we'll want to take that first. We got Goblin up. You'll want to use him as soon as you have his ability up. And we'll just use that there. We have another extra turn right here, you can see. We'll take that. There's no other extra turns, so we'll take these skulls. And we already got the first Ogre down without taking a speck of damage. Take those greens. Got some extra blues off the Cascade. Uh, let's see here. I want to save this for when Shegra gets closer to maxed out. But based on the gems that are available on the board, I'm just going to cast it. Now it reduces attack by 2. You'll definitely want him at level 6, so he can do 2. If you have him lower than level 6, he'll only reduce it by 1 and be completely useless. You're better off just replacing him with the random troop you get from a chest. It's going to take Skull. We're taking our first damage. Luckily, you can survive two more shots. Uh, Shegra's getting up there. Um, right now, what I'm going to do is actually focus down... Um, Shegra to try to get him killed Because he's I'm gonna just try reducing his attack down to make sure he's not a threat and I'll kind of just ignore the other uh, Let's take brown to make sure Shegra doesn't Because they're only using three colors and Shegra's the main one take reds again to make sure we get that up and make sure Shegra doesn't have it He'll take the browns though, and he's getting very close to maxing that out uh, Let's see here um, I'll take this take the damage there's nothing you can really do in the board. Uh, we'll want to take this up instead of vertically so he doesn't get that sculpt here. Uh, let's see here. We'll take this and then we get two and one. He'll take the browns and now he's going to be able to cast. Uh, whenever he has his ability up, you're going to want to take reds, but there aren't any reds that we can match right now. So I'm just going to take this. He will get that attack and that attack. Goblin's pretty much dead right now. And he got an extra turn. So he's already doing a lot of damage to me. Luckily, we got this extra turn. Uh, let's see here. Quite a bit we can do. Want to see if we can get a good uh, lance off. Uh, I guess I'll do it right here. Lance, um, killing, uh, doing uh, lance... It destroys gems. Destroys gems give uh, one uh, uh, mana point per gem destroyed. And if you happen to hit through any skulls, it will do one damage to the first enemy per skull hit. So let's just keep lowering their attack. Make sure Shegra can't do anything. What we're actually going to be doing is lowering this guy down to zero. So he can't actually do anything when Shegra recasts. And then we'll just have everything back up for killing the other ones. Unfortunately, we did lose our goblin, so we won't be able to keep chipping at uh, the Shegra, but that shouldn't be too big a deal. Uh, let's see here. And the Lance will just keep be, will just keep tanking and make sure they can't really do anything. So I will cast this. He'll explode a random gem with that, but that won't be too big a deal. It's actually like one of the worst abilities in the game, but he does have really high stats. Um, 
as you can see here, you can just count down one, two, three. If I take that, he's going to be able to uh, take the skull. So I'm not going to take that. I'll let him get his sugar up a little bit. Instead, I am going to take this. And that will give that ability up. Oh, and we got an extra turn off there. That was really lucky. Um, well, now I'll start reducing that. Hopefully, I'll take that brown on his next turn because he needs it. And if he does, we'll get a free attack off. Yep, he goes for it. And now we'll use that attack. Plus, we even get some extra gems right there. He will get that extra turn and a skull pair off that, unfortunately, though. So that took some damage on us. Uh, let's see. We'll probably want to take these browns to make sure Shugra doesn't cast. Or actually, what we can do instead uh, is take these greens. That'll fill up that. And we'll be able to reduce his attack down to two to make sure Shugra doesn't do too much damage. So we do some down it again. Now he's only doing two damage. Shugra will cast. He will get some skull pairs, maybe even an extra turn. But it will be really minimal damage. There we go. Six. He still survives. Now let's see here. Uh... Yeah, I'll take that green. You don't always want to take the re recommended move because many times it is a horrible move. But sometimes it is decent. Just use your brain. <laughs> the main thing um, to use it for is to um, find uh, four time pairs and stuff like that to make sure um, you can actually, if you like are having trouble like finding a match, that's mainly what it's used for. Or to double check for extra turns that are left on the board. Because any four times, five times, or higher matches will automatically give an extra turn. Okay, so we have the banner. So this will completely fill up um, that because it's giving four mana per match. So I'm going to do that to reduce his attack down to nothing. Unfortunately, we just lose that. And that's not going to be too big a deal. We'll take these reds. I'm going to take it this way. Actually, now that I'm thinking of it, I think I'm going to wait to uh, cast that. So we could try getting Shegra down to zero attack. Once Shegra is down to zero attack, you've basically won this game. There's not really many ways that he can uh, beat you. It's still possible that he can beat you, but it's a lot less likely. Uh, there's a lot of uh, colors in my favor now, so I'm just going to reduce him down to zero attack and try filling him back up so we have it for when Shegra is there. Uh, we'll take this attack. That'll bring him down to one HP. He has zero attack, though, so we don't need to worry about him too much now. Uh, we'll take this down, take the reds, fill that up. We even got a free key there, a gold key. You'll get them on occasion for manual matches that you make. Uh, we'll take this, fill that up. We almost have it up now. Shugra is getting close to casting as well, but that's not too big a deal right now. Uh, I'll take this. Didn't do anything bad, so that's good. He'll take that. Hopefully his skull doesn't come, it doesn't. He has his ability up. That shouldn't be too big a deal, though. Actually, we're going to kill him. Or, actually, I don't know. Let's see here. Um, yeah, we'll kill him. And then reduce Shegra's attack. Shegra will go for one of those two, though. Like right there. Let's see. Shegra is about to cast really soon. But there's no good moves to do, so I'm just going to reduce his attack. He'll take those browns. Hopefully a skull goes down so we can take it from him. Oh, really nice. We take that. We get that. And we have another skull pair right here. I'll take this first. Just for the extra spare gold. Why not? And we'll take this up. And now he's already down to 5 HP. He is at 4 attack. So this may kill him. We don't know. Let's see. Oh, he completely misses with it. So that works really well in our favor. As you can see right here. If you take these, that will drop down. And we just won the game right there. So Shegra defeated using the four troops that you get at the beginning of the game. So that's how you do it. The team, the order that you put them in, as well as basically what you do to defeat them. You'll definitely need Warhound at level 6. The other ones can basically be whatever you want. So let's get this. We go through all this. Uh, you get an um, epic at the end of every single kingdom. So uh, you'll definitely be wanting to uh, check what epics there are. It's the one that does the quest line for every single kingdom. Um, I'll try getting a list out or something. I know I made one a while ago. I don't know where it might be posted, though. So I'll see if I can get that in the description as well. Uh, the next kingdom you'd probably want to do after this is Zolkari, because the epic there is uh, really useful. Plus, you'll need it to uh, unlock Treasure Hunt, which I'll explain at a later video. Um, 
Uh, for right now, I'm going to go into um, some other useful things. Uh, for example, gems. You'll want to be spending gems on armors when you first start off in this game. Especially playing free-to-play, like this account will be. This uh, Let's Play will be completely as free-to-play. But um, we'll go into armor here. There's all various armors. All of these are cosmetic, but they do increase the amount of resources you get. Once you get 50 gems, you'll want to buy the Assassin Armor or the Dwarven Armor, depending on if you want souls or gold. I would go with the Dwarven Armor myself, because uh, gold is used for a lot more than souls. And Archmage, you definitely do not want to get. You do not need a lot of EXP in the early game. Actually, you'd want to be keeping your EXP as low as possible, so you can do uh, perform better in PvP. Because if you just power level, you're going to be getting outclassed real quickly by other players. And uh, once you really get a lot of gems, you want to save up for either the Dragon Armor or the Celestial Armor. Uh, the Dragon Armor, of course, would be focused on gold, and the Celestial Armor would be on souls. Uh, the preference for this can basically be whichever one you really want more. I prefer the Dragon Armor, but that is more so your choice. Uh, some other things. Uh, while I won't be spending money on this account, some things that you might want to do... If you feel like supporting the dev some or just want some extra help in this game is um, daily gems. It is a really cheap um, alternative for buying gems. It's only five dollars and it will give you 225 gems over the course of 15 days. It is definitely the best value of any of the lower packs that you can possibly get. Like uh, right now it's offering you like these starter packs and stuff like this. You can get them if you want, but they aren't particularly good compared to other buying options. But if you want to spend just a little bit on this game, I advise the Daily Gems. If you buy this twice, you pretty much have enough to buy Dragon Armor or the Celestial Armor that I mentioned right over here. And one other thing, if you really feel like uh, supporting the devs and you feel like you're going to be playing this game long term and you really like Gems of War, I would advise going with the Death Knight Armor, or the Armor Pack. It gives 100% to all resources, plus 200 gems, plus a lot of useful keys that you'll be able to use. And another way, if you don't feel like spending any money, there are streamers that give out uh, codes on occasion, like uh, Philosophy and um, SC2 Draco. And I as well give out codes on my YouTube channel, which you are on right now, if you're watching this. And I'll give out uh, one right now to help out all you new players out there, because they are really helpful early game. I give one out every Wednesday when I do the um, event video for each week. And I give out another one in a random video every single week. And that is where this one is right now. All you need to do is click on shop and then click on redeem codes. Then you type in this code, QDNBF1QPRN. And the first 150 people who do this for every single video will get the following rewards. It is uh, two maps, which you can use once you unlock uh, Zolkari, once you finish the quest line there. Uh, one gem key. 200 souls and 2,500 gold. So all that will really help help you out in the beginning of this game because that's a lot of resources this early. And uh, before I conclude this video, I do have a bunch of chests that I got from Guild Task, so let's open those right now. We have the one gem key that we just got from the Redeem Code. Let's see what that is. We got an Ancient Horror, not too bad. And let's see what we can get from these. These is where we're really going to be getting some rewards now since we have so many. Let's just skip through these and see. So we have a lot right now. Um, we got Elwyn. Uh, he's pretty weak. Mercy is really good right now. But you do need her traits. So she isn't that good in early game. I won't be using her for a long while. Rawani is actually a really good drop from a chest right now. You do get her from um, the uh, Forest of Thorns for completing the quest line there. But having her early is really good. She got buffed uh, recently to do uh, two times damage based on her armor. And uh, getting a armor buffing troop with her can really push her on to do a lot of damage. Like even right now, she's doing 8, 4, so total that's 12 damage every single time she casts as long as she doesn't lose that armor. She does really high damage output. I may have to do a team with her later to show you guys. Uh, Scarlet's okay. She's mostly an anti-beast hero. Uh, not You won't be needing her too much. Uh, Berserker's okay. Uh, we got a lot more blast cannons. Uh, Blade Dancer, you won't be using him too much early. He does uh, split damage based on um, an enemy's armor. You'll find him more into mid-game. 
but he uh, you won't find him in early or late game. You don't need him too much. Uh, Gorgon is really good. He does two times uh, damage on his random attack. He well first he's like Lance Knight. He destroys a row, but instead of gaining armor at two times, he does damage at two times. So he's basically a reverse Lance Knight. He also gets really tanky once you start getting his traits. Uh, that you use trait stones to uh, upgrade these later in the game. Early game, you won't have too many, but um, you'd want to get him up to stone skin, which reduces skulls by 50%. That makes him really good. Uh, Grave Knight's a little weak. He just destroys armor and um, does some damage. Uh, Herdmaster uh, destroys a bunch of gems, cleanses all allies. You don't need him that well uh, much in the early game, but he does get a little bit better later on. Uh, we have uh, the Sk Sacred Guardian. He's actually pretty good. He get, uh, deals damage, and then all the damage that he deals, he gains armor for. So he can get pretty tanky. He also has uh, the armor trait once you get him fully up. So that helps, too. You don't need him too traded, though. Uh, the Watcher, he deals some true damage, and then another uh, one true damage to adja adjacent enemies. It also drains mana if uh, an, an enemy has any kind of status effect, like poison, freeze, death mark, or anything like that. So it's okay, troop. You don't find him too much, either. Uh, Archon Statue's a really good tank. Uh, you'll want to put him up front. He deals, look at this, he deals 4 damage to a healthy enemy, but if he is uh, damaged, he deals uh, 8 additional damage. At level 1, he is doing 3 times the amount of damage if he is damaged, so he is really good in early game. He also has really good traits that scale up to uh, mid game, like Stone Skin. Uh, Banshee... She is really good for looping. You'll see her with Valkyrie and uh, Alchemist teams if you ever get them. Glad I got this because I'll be wanting to uh, build that team up pretty quickly because it's really good at farming. Uh, Bombarder's okay. Uh, you won't really need him that much. Uh, Cyclops, he deals uh, damage to the first enemy boosted by his attack. Uh, he's okay too. Um, Luther is somewhat good with him because I didn't show it earlier. But that uh, epic that we got from the very first kingdom, he uh, increases all allies' attack. So uh, he can be useful for that. Um, the Cockatrice is uh, an okay troop. It uh, doesn't deal anything with magic. This is one of few troops in the game that is completely unaffected by magic. And all it does is entangle an enemy and then drains their mana. It can be a really good counter for keeping uh, enemies down. But it uh, makes the match fairly slow. Because all it does is disable. If we had this earlier, this would have been really good. Because... Um, Unlike uh, the Warhound, which just uh, lowers by two, you can just keep spamming this on the first enemy. Because uh, what Entangle does is it reduces an enemy's attack for zero for the duration that they are entangled. So they wouldn't be able to do any damage at all. So instead of just shipping them down two attack at a time like we were, you'd be able to do it all in one shot. So that would be a really good replacement for uh, the Shegra battle if you happen to have gotten in before the actual Shegra battle. Uh, here we have Dark Master. He is really good in early game because he can summon a uh, Thrall. And that level gets uh, boosted based on your level of your Thrall as well as the level of your Dark Master. Which I'll explain summoning more in a uh, later video. But he is really good. If you have Dark Master, you'll definitely want to be uh, leveling up Thrall and uh, Dark Master up some in the early game. It's a really helpful troop. Uh, Dryad here. It is a really good support hero. Uh, it gives some life to an enemy. Or uh, to an ally, I mean. Uh, heals them some. The difference between uh, life gain and life heal. Life gain um, increases the max HP of an ally. Whereas life heal just um, moves them towards their max. It doesn't actually raise their max. Plus it gives them a barrier. A barrier will uh, block one instance of jam damage. And then she creates a bunch of green gems. She also has some really good traits like Impervious. If you uh, start trading her out. Uh, Dark Maiden's okay. A really cheap uh, poison spell if you need it. Uh, Miss Stalker got extremely buffed recently. If you have him, you might want to consider a team with him. Uh, the Magic Link helps up out a lot on his first trait once he can get that up. And he deals uh, 4 true damage to an enemy, which means he uh, hits their HP. He completely ignores their armor. And then he poisons them, which will keep uh, doing 1 damage at 50% chance every single turn. So that will really help kill uh, your the weaker enemies on the enemy team. Plus he gains 3 magic if the enemy dies, which is a lot. Uh, Owlbeer, it's kind of um, basically what uh, we did our, um, our Warhound to with that minus 2 attack, except it also does uh, damage based on its magic. Uh, we have Poison Master here, just uh, explodes some random green gems. 
and uh, poisons two random enemies. It's kind of like a Herdmaster, except a little bit weaker. Uh, Pegasus, you can pretty much ignore. I'm not even going to go over that. It's actually a really weak troop. Uh, Ranger. Actually, I guess I'll go over it. I've gone over this many. It deals three damage to the last enemy, and then um, removes all yellow and boosts it at two to one. Um, back, shot, back hitting troops is fairly decent in the early game, but you won't need it too much later on. I uh, skipped Ranger. Uh, Ranger deals uh, six damage to an enemy, and then ba and that increases based on his magic. And then he uh, randomly hits uh, other enemies with eight damage. It's a really good troop because you can focus down one and then split on the other. Um, he's decent in early game, but you won't need him too much after. So I'm not going to really consider him too much. Uh, Revenant, he does hit the back troop and then places Death Mark on it. Uh, Death Mark after two turns has a um, uh, starts gaining a 10% chance to kill the enemy every single turn, but the ch it normally cleanses before it can actually kill, so it's not that good. Summoner is basically Dark Master, uh, but more of a support. It summons a ghoul, and basically in the same fashion that Dark Master summons a Thrall, and it increases uh, all allies' uh, life by four. Uh, the magic is linked to the level, though, not by uh, the heal. So the heal is a constant four at all levels. So uh, Summoner, if you don't happen to have uh, the Dark Master yet, Summoner is a great alternative. Uh, Sabertooth Lion uh, deals damage to an enemy and then gain uh, five magic. Uh, I can get quite a bit of damage if you can get a first shot off on him. He can be somewhat decent early on. Um, Siren we have here uh, creates uh, nine gem of the enemy's troop color, which isn't too good, but she does have Empowered, which starts her off with the ability when uh, she first starts off. You won't need her too much early on, but she is something to consider later on in the game. Uh, I wouldn't advise it uh, too uh, too much from the start. Um, Vampire Lord would have been really good if we had him for the sugar fight. He deals uh, two true damage to an enemy, uh, boosted by the amount of uh, red gems he removes. Then he gains four life, and that red remover red removal is really good against uh, Shugra and other things that um, use reds. And here we just have a bunch of uh, random trait stones. They're used to get traits on things. There's some keys and there's some extra glory. Glory is used mainly to get um, the event uh, troops from every single week. Like if I go over, oops, let me click OK. Like let me go over to um, shop and you go to rewards. There are all the reward things that you can get. You can get some maps if you want. Not too good. Spoilers of war is really bad. You won't need to buy those souls. But you will want to do is buy the um, event pack every single week if you can afford it. It gives a new troop that comes out. There's a new troop that comes out every single week. And uh, it gives you some glory keys. It gives you a decent amount of gold keys. 5,000 gold, which is really useful, especially early on. And then it gives two arcane trait stones, which are used for some of the more... Uh, which is used for the final trait on uh, uh, most troops. Well, actually, all troops. And then some four uh, minor trait stones, which will help in leveling things up. Well, let's open up these last keys real quick. And uh, we'll end this video. Uh, three gold keys. We'll just get uh, Spider Swarm, Archon Statue, and a Skeleton. That one's new. Uh, create seven skulls and then gain three armor. And it gains an extra turn. Or seven skulls. Yeah, I said seven skulls. Um, he's okay. You'd want to have him more as a support to help like a really high damage troop. Also, I don't think I showed Spider Swarm. Um, there's bigger... Uh, the giant spider you'll get later on in this game will summon these things. This is basically a smaller form of it that it'll be summoning. You'll want to have it leveled if you're going to use the uh, giant spider. But you'll never actually want to put one of these in your team because it's really weak. It just deals some damage to an enemy and then a 50% chance to poison it. It's not even a 100% chance. And let's open up these last two uh, 22 glory chests. We got another mercy. Wow. Uh, Black Beast... Um, he can be okay in the early game. He devours one of your own allies, which isn't that good, but he then heals himself, which is really good combined with devour because he can stay really tanky. And then he creates six skulls. So he'll be able to like one shot most of the enemies, especially early on. I don't advise him too much though, because, uh, he's good in like arena and stuff, which I'll get into later. But, uh, having him in a team, you're basically just killing your own team. Uh, Rack Shannon's actually a pretty recent troop. And that was added to the game. It deals uh, three damage to an enemy, and then it's boosted by their life, and it's boosted by a half ratio. So if they had like no armor left, you're basically doing half damage to them, and then however much damage he does there. 
Uh, War Sphinx is a really horrible card in this game. All it does is jumble the board, which uh, just switches all the positions of gems on the board, and then it gains an extra turn. Um, yeah, there's not much to really say about him. Don't use him in his current state. Uh, Boar Rider is a really important troop that gets uh, added to an all Marauder deck, which I'll show uh, later on in this series. He removes an entire row, which is different from Lance Knight. Lance Knight destroys an entire row. When you remove gems, the uh, gems you removed have uh, no effect. They do absolutely nothing. But then he deals some damage to the first enemy. And the most important thing is he gains an extra turn. And uh, goblins, uh, pretty much all goblins have an extra turn on them. So they can just keep looping extra turns. You'll see them quite a bit. Because they are really popular. You can counter it with uh, status effects like freeze though. Uh, Dryad I already went over. Night Terror is basically a weaker version of... Um, the Mist Stalker that I showed uh, early on. So you won't really need this troop. It just deals some damage to the weakest enemy. And they're uh, boosted by all blue gems removed. You mostly only use it if you need to remove blue gems. Uh, Paladin is really strong once you get an armor buffer. It's kind of like Rowani that I showed earlier. Except slightly weaker. It deals damage to an enemy. And then it's boosted by his armor. And right now even just at level 1 he does 4. Compared to Rowani that was doing 12. It's a little outclassed but... Once you start getting armor buffs on him, he can really start to one-shot enemies. Revenant, I already went over. Sabretooth, Warhound, you'll know if I'm starting off with it. Uh, Wolf Knight's actually a bit decent. Um, he deals 2 damage and then adds 6 damage if the enemy is wounded. Wounded is determined by if the enemy has uh, red HP here. If it's below their max HP, they're considered wounded and they'll do that extra damage. Uh, similar to what I mentioned earlier... You do an extra hole three times if you... Actually, this is four times. It's doing a whole additional six. Unlike um, uh, the stone statue thing. Or what Archon statue, I mean. But he does a lot of extra damage at lower levels. And you definitely want to consider Wolf Knight if you get him on his team. If you uh, get one early on. Um, Warlock just does some damage and then removes all purple gems. He's okay. Um... We got an Arcane Trait Stone, some other Trait Stones, and that is basically it. So that will do this for this video. I hope this was helpful, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.